Thank you, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to begin our Bible study. My brother Ken, could you say? Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here for this Bible study. We ask you uh, to bless Pastor and this teaching, and may we glean from it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Tonight we're going to be in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning to read in verse 3. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons, verse 4, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, before I teach this tonight, I want to say this. There is an old European proverb that says, age and treachery will always defeat youth and zeal. Now, I'm about to teach on spiritual warfare. And the title was, it is, The Battle in Your Mind. Now, no one has taught me this, <laughs> this experience. <laughs> uh, and I've never heard any of my leaders teach this either. Um, so well, why not? I don't know. But I'm going to teach you. You should know that the foe we are up against is an ancient and extremely treacherous foe. Jesus prepared his disciples for everything, including war. They saw him casting out demons. In fact, he sent them out. He really sent them out to do the same things. But before he sent them out, he charged them to become wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16 says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This blend of divine wisdom and Christ-like innocence is a source of all spiritual victory. We can, C-A-N, defeat the enemy because he's already defeated. Jesus spoiled him on the cross when he died on, on the cross over 2,000 years ago. In other words, he took all uh, everything he had. But we must learn the ways of God, which means we must think with wisdom. We must be pure of heart. and We may see God and gain, that we may see God and gain discernment. Remember, Adam and Eve were in paradise when they fell. Okay. It was in paradise. Solomon wrote three books of scripture. He actually gazed upon the glory of God, yet he fell. And don't forget Lucifer himself was once in heaven as an angel of light. Jesus warned that the love of many, now, even back then, but it's even really um, more now. He said, the love of many shall wax cold. Don't think. It can't happen to you. Our enemy has been deceiving mankind for thousands of years. So be bold in your prayer life. It's quiet out there. <laughs> Many well-meaning Christians have approached the battlefield 
of spiritual warfare with an attitude of not being serious and have suffered greatly for it. Now, <laughs> church, you know, now when, when I was, when I, before I became saved, church attendance was just church attendance. That's all it was. If I can make it to church, I can. That's all it was. It was just church attendance. It wasn't as serious. But when I got saved, I saw that I was fighting for my soul. It was very serious. Because if I died, there was, there's no second chance. Don't believe Hollywood. We'll get a second chance. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> Satan is out to deceive us. Okay? To torment us. To destroy us. He wants to keep us from the truth because he knows that the truth, the truth of the word of God, when it is applied to our lives, will make and set us free. And the attack of the enemy, I could preach, but I'm trying not to. The attack of the enemy is raging. It's raging among individual lives all over the world. What is his real strategy, preacher? How does he bring about all this chaos and disorder? It all starts in the mind. It all starts in the mind. This is the primary means of beginning his destruction. The Bible speaks of the weapons of our warfare. And it's important to realize that we are at war. Sometimes when I be teasing them, they always get them. You always had that, that. Are they really listening to you? And when I say war, I'm speaking of life and death. A fight for our, your spiritual lives. So we must come to the realization we need to fight if we are to survive. The Bible says that we contend for the faith. And this whole war is one that begins right here in the mind. Now, the area of our thoughts, the area of our thoughts is the main battleground. The warfare starts in the mind, but then if allowed, it will spread to other areas of our lives as well. King James ver ver Version of verse 5 it speaks of casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The New International Version, it says, demolishing arguments and pretenses. In the Greek, we find translated imaginations or arguments actually means a reasoning or decision. This speaks of the way we often are able to take the truth of God's word and twist and turn it in such a way that it's no longer absolute. It's no longer the absolute truth. That our specific situation that we're going through is so special or unique that we're not bound by the same rules as everyone else. Ain't nobody's going through this like I'm going through it. We rationalize, excuse, and reason the truth into exactly what we want to hear. This goes back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 and the deception of the serpent to Eve. That subtle serpent whispered a thought. She reasoned it, she reasoned it out in her mind until it became acceptable to break the command of God. Paul is saying here, we are of or we are to use our spiritual weapons to break down these arguments and imaginations that go on in our minds, put there by the enemy of our souls. So once again, the battleground is in the mind. And thoughts are what Satan wants to slip in. 
thoughts. I'm going to break that down tonight. In Acts chapter 8, we have the story of Philip going down to Samaria for a revival. Praise God. We got a revival coming up in here. Um, October 31st, one week. Reverend Love. That's a, that's a preacher named Reverend Love? That's right. <laughs> Reverend Love. L-O-V-E. He's coming to preach, his, preach some sermons. Oh, amen. Can't wait. Back then in Samaria, there was a revival going on. Multitudes were being saved. They were being healed and filled uh, with the Holy Ghost being delivered from the power of Satan. But in this story, we also see a man by the name of Simon, the sorcerer. There's a revival going on in land. Then there's a <laughs> interject in there, Simon the sorcerer. And Simon, he wrongly offers Peter and John money for the gift of laying on of hands to receive the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Peter immediately, he didn't try to discuss with him like, oh, you know, oh, you know, you can't. Peter immediately rebuked Simon. And he said, man, you're full of bitterness and, and in cap, you, you're captive by sin. In Acts chapter 8, verse 23, but I was going to throw that up there. Oh, he already put it up there. Thanks, brother. That man is quick. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of of iniquity. Now think of what Peter is saying here. Look at what he says was at the heart of this man's problem. He was full of bitterness. And that bitterness made him a captive to sin. Bitterness, I put down here, blinded him to the truth of God's ways. And in verse 22, he says to Simon, repent, change, turn from your way. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So you can read that verse real fast, so you, could, you won't see what's in this verse. You see, Simon was motivated by a thought. Okay? Got that verse up there? If perhaps the thought okay and where did that thought come from it ain't come from God what Peter was saying was Satan has put a thought in your heart and you have accepted that thought as your own and acted on it now pray for God to forgive you for that thought notice he didn't say thoughts But thought, singular, singular. Pray that God will forgive you for that one thought that leads you in the wrong direction. So often one thought placed in our minds by Satan that will make us say and do things that are destructive and hurtful to people and to the body of Christ. One thought. You see, the enemy's primary approach is to drop a thought into our minds. Okay? You know you want to sleep with her. That ain't never happened to none of us men in here. Huh? Mm -hmm. Probably happened to somebody here in there today. He wants us to accept it and then act upon it. The danger is once, the danger is I put down here, once we do, that thought can become a stronghold. Stronghold. Don't think that Satan's lying thoughts can't have a stronghold on people's lives. Don't think you. People, they think they're giving away with things, but they're not. Thoughts can hold you like a vice and keep you uh, from the truth. One lie put down here. One lie from Satan can hold you in a place of sickness. I know a person right now, just thinking of them right now, they're always sick. They're always sick. Always. And then when you look at them, there's nothing wrong with them. But they always, they, they, they think that they're sick so much that they make themselves sick. One lie from Satan can hold you in a place of sickness, of suffering, of torment, bitterness, 
forgiveness, unforgiveness, excuse me. And it will last just as long as you permit it. As long as you accept it. Okay. Men are held captive by a thought. I ain't going to forgive them. They better come to me. Kneel down to me. You do this. One thought. And that thought brings fear. Some of those thoughts are, you know, good. You'll never make it to heaven. Who are you? You still the same way. You ain't change. Your children will die and go to hell. These are the thoughts that Satan places in people's hearts. You know something? Today you're going to have a car wreck. You have cancer. You're going to die. You never get well. You're of no use to God's kingdom or his work. So why even come to church? If you were saved, you wouldn't even think like this. Ain't that what it says as well? Your wife and your husband, they don't love you. These thoughts go on and on and on. The devil brings thousands of thoughts into people's minds. You know, I ain't going to even finish this. Help me, Jesus. These thoughts bring fear, and when they take root in our mind, we begin to speak them. And what once was an accusing voice now becomes your voice. It becomes your voice saying, I ain't no good. I'll never make it happen. I got cancer. I'll never recover. I'm sick. I'll never make it. On and on and on. There's nothing more, there's nothing more than a trick of the death, of the enemy. Don't fall into that trap. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians. <sighs> Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. In bringing into captivity <laughs> every thought to the obedience of Christ. We need to replace that lie with the truth of God's word. Amen. Okay? We should fight these battles with God's mighty weapons, not man's. You need to go see a psychiatrist. Okay? Because these weapons are the only ones that will tear down the strongholds of the enemy, the Lord's weapons. These are the only weapons that will guarantee spiritual victory. This is the only way, I put down here, to overcome the devil by using the word of God. Remember, the devil is not only a liar. He is the father of all lies. Okay? You can't tell the truth. There may be some here tonight that are convinced that their destiny is to always suffer. To suffer pain. To suffer sickness. To suffer from broken relationship. To never have victory over this or that. You know, I was under, I was under uh, uh, that, uh, under the persuasion that I was nothing. Until I actually believed the word of God. Always comes back to belief. Believe. And so once you believe the word of God, say to all these Things, you know, you ever see the, the Marvel hero? You know, I don't know, just any of them. They <laughs> find a machine gun. Da, 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 da. You hear a fun, ding, 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 man of steel. Ding, just punches it off. You did. Satan always throws those stars. Just punches it off. Ding, 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 ding. So does that work all the time, preacher? If you know the word of God. i tell you this. Put down here, have you become convinced that your life is messed up and can't be fixed? You will never be healed. You will never be set free. You will never be delivered and revived as long as you think how you are right now. If you think that way, right now. 
if you think that's that's what that's all what God has for you, He has so much more for us. That's why He throws Satan throws those thoughts. A thought. Chicken. I mean, that's what he does. It's the devil who wants you to suffer. That robs Christians of their joy, their peace, their family, relationships, and even their church. Sometimes people don't, you know, they, they got these thoughts going in, they just stop coming to church. So what, what happened? I thought they was doing so good. Call them. Do, do, do. Or just green to the, go to the answer machine. It's the devil, the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Faith is an action. Okay? And to believe, to have faith in the word of God is to act on the word of God. No. Okay. Nine minutes, thank God. Paul says the weapons available to us are mighty through God. Did you get what I just said? Mighty. Not through us, through God. Working through and in us. His weapons are mighty through him, through God. Not just to get by. Okay, God, he, the Lord does, he doesn't Serving the Lord, he just doesn't have us just to get by. Mm -hmm. But his weapons demolish strongholds in our lives, especially the thoughts. When the enemy comes in with these thoughts, I put down here, and tries to torment us or cause us to live and act contrary to the word of God, we need to begin to fight with the same weapons Jesus did to defeat Satan. And that is, how did Jesus defeat Satan? He began to let him know what God said, his father. He began to quote the word of God with faith and assurance. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Okay? If the devil says you're not saved, I always say when the devil says something, you replace it with the opposite. Because whatever the devil tells you in your mind, it's the opposite of what's in the Word of God. The devil tells you you're not saved. Replace that thought with the words of John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, Gave he to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You ain't got that on there, brother? That's all right. I'm gonna say it again. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's that word again, believe. I, that word believe changed my life. That brother prayed me and prayed uh, with me at the altar. He said, has anybody ever told you just believe? All my life, I was looking at the preacher. All my life, I was looking at my mama. All that life, my life, I've been looking at all these other people believing in the Lord, and I ain't believe God myself. Because I had an inferiority complex. People was telling me I was a nothing. Y'all kids won't be about nothing. But Jesus changed that thought. He changed that thought pattern. If the enemy tells you that God will not forgive your sin or heal your disease, replace that thought with one of God's healing. His heal, one of his thoughts of healing, delivering thoughts like Psalms chapter 103, verse 2 and 3. I know that's on there, brother. <laughs> Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You think your job got benefits? I guarantee you, God got more benefits than your job. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. God, it's been shared that God has the greatest benefits package there is. Yes, sir. Especially, retirement. Yes, especially retirement. 
even especially uh, <laughs> healing. He said, well, 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 should I go to the doctor? Pray. If the enemy tells you that you've been rejected and without hope or resources, finances, okay? Replace that with Psalm chapter 102 and verse 17. Did I put down there, bro? He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Hello? We need to remind Satan of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Five minutes. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Did you know if you've prayed and asked Christ into your heart and your life, you are a new creature. You are a new creation. We're more, the Bible says, than conquerors through him that loved us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay? We can boldly stand up and say, I rebuke you, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you and your thought out of my mind. Go in Jesus' name. Okay? And he will go. Okay? James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Submit yourselves. Okay? Did I put that on there too, brother? I didn't? There's no more? Got you. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. You know how you can remember that? Stop in the name of God. You remember that, won't you? That pastor had his hand up like that and he was saying something about stop. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. How many of you ever had a hard time getting to Bible study or church? But somehow got there. I commend you. Put down here. I commend you because you yielded to those. You didn't yield to those pressures. If you would have yielded to them, you would have had faced them again and again. You see, Satan isn't omniscient. In other words, he's not all-knowing. He can't read your mind or see what's in your heart. Okay? He's dependent solely upon trial and error to see what works on you. Okay? I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, thank you, Sister I'm going to share it now. Therefore, if he sees that a headache will keep you from worship and Bible study, guess what? It's coming on. <laughs> you will have perpetual headaches right before a church service. If he sees that your kids acting up causes you to pull back and stay home and not be where you should be, he'll have found the key to slowing you down. You know, what? I can see Satan on it. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, this was. Whatever he got to do. I'm convinced to put down here that many people experience unnecessary things in their homes or trials in their lives because they don't understand this verse of resisting the devil. And he'll flee from you. They don't realize that if they just resist the devil, he will indeed flee. Jesus used the same thing to whip the devil. One minute. Satan placed the thought in Jesus' mind. Remember, turn these stones. Turn these stones to bread, Jesus. But Jesus rejected that thought and replaced it with one of God's thoughts by saying, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you can whip the devil every time by saying, it is written. Then go on to say what is written in the word of God. Well, I don't know what God says in his word. Is that God's fault? There's churches and Bibles. You got about 
You even got a Bible on your phone. Ain't no reason why you just can't pick up your phone. I'm going through such and such. And you could Google what's what do I say, God? Oh, just Google. God, I'm going through this. What am I what should I say, Google? Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means we need to make the devil thoughts bow to the word of Almighty God. The thought that he places in our in our minds. The thought. I say thoughts. The thought. We may think it's a lot of thoughts, but it's thought. It's thought. That one thought begins to multiply itself. We need to drive them out with the power of his word. We need to pull them down with thus saith the Lord. This is what the word of God says. This is what the word of God says. Because we're fighting for our souls. We're fighting for our lives. Okay? I know. 701. Help me, Jesus. Brother Josh, read. Could you close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come today and thank you for this opportunity to give you the praise and the glory. Father God, your word has been forth. Father God, I ask that each and every person applies this word to their everyday life. Father God, I ask right now that they continue to move forward in your way that they continue to study your word, Father God. I ask right now that you bless us, Lord God, that you touch us, that you show us the way, that you just give us understanding of your word. We thank you and we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. This week, I'm going to give you some homework. Read the word of God. Read God's word and, and know what you should do when Satan throws a thought in your mind. God bless you.